All right, guys, this is a pretty decent box size wise. It's pretty big, but what's inside here is something I've been looking forward for for quite some time. It took me a while to look for something like this. This is essentially the last unibody model year, 15 inch MacBook. Apparently, there's a lot of things wrong with this computer, but I have a lot of donor computers. This shouldn't be a problem trying to fix it. What do we have here? What is this? Mojack? Is this some kind of software? What year is this? 2011. Apple Care Protection. Ooh, I've never seen something like this. There's something inside, but I don't want to open it for collection purposes. Looks like this guy definitely had some kind of protection plan in the past. We got some interesting charger situation going on here. Some kind of organizer for the charger. Looks like the charger isn't in the best shape considering it's held by tape. Finally, what I've been looking forward for, this is a MacBook Pro 2012 15 inch. Oh my God, that is heavy. This is the complete MacBook experience right here. We have the plastic bag that Apple gives you when you had a brand new MacBook back in the day. Oh, it looks like this is a custom to configure MacBook. Look at that. <laughs> I can feel something slushing around. 2.3 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive. So this is running an original hard drive. It's not the big deal. Definitely upgrade that because this logic board to me is what's really worth it. I hope this is not cracked like in my previous video and I'm holding it the wrong way possible right now. Oh, that's a pretty weak hinge. There's no cracks on the display. It looks like there is some sort of protection on the keyboard and look at that. The keyboard looks very clean. Full battery. Looks like we have some sort of battery life here. But that's always wonderful. I'm looking at the bottom right now. It looks very clean. I take it back. And there's a, clearly a big hole in the black bar right there. <laughs> We're gonna have to see if this even works. Malware is real. Mac malware has increased dramatically in the last two years. Well, what year was this? 2013, look at that. Expires in 2012 actually. And let's see if it comes with Apple stickers because that would really complete the experience. Oh, it does. And it comes with a microfiber. This is unopened too, look at that. Oh, it has the Apple logo right there. It has the Apple logo. This would have cost 20 bucks alone. We got the Hello, we got the MacBook Pro, and we got the original Apple stickers, I'm presuming. This is a complete experience for this MacBook 2012. Well, you know what, let's get rid of this. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna press the power now. Oh, there's power. Fun fact about the 2012 Unibody MacBook, this is essentially the same as the Retina 2012 MacBook Pro 15 inch. So you have the same specs, but the issue is that the 2012 Retina MacBooks are actually quite unreliable. So they have some sort of a graphics issue. Trackpad does not seem to be working here. It does not work. It is slow, but I'm not sure if that's because the hard drive's dying or it's just slow in general. Oh, it's running Mojave. You can see it right there. Looks like the keyboard is not working properly. Okay guys, I'm losing a bit of patience here. This has been on the same screen for the past five minutes. I'm gonna try running a bootable drive here because this seems to be very slow for some reason. Let's go ahead and check the specs actually. I'm very curious to see. Looks like we have a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i7 and then we got 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz of RAM. So that's always a plus. Definitely got extra RAM there. It's got about 800 cycles and about 3,900 milliamps left. This might be a battery situation actually. It's time to open this thing, flip it on its back. Clearly the keyboard is not working properly on this computer as well as the fact that the CPU doesn't seem to be running 100%. I have this complete new shell from a 2010 MacBook Pro 15 inch here. As you can see, it's a bit crusty, but <laughs> we can clean that up later on. Now these unibody MacBooks are fantastic for a lot of DIYers out there because of how easy it is by just moving a couple of Phillips head. We do have one already right here. That's not good. It does look like it has a aftermarket battery from newer tech. I think these are pretty decent, but clearly this one already has some miles on it. Oh, <laughs> looks like that one is unlatched and we got the upgraded 16 gigabytes of RAM right here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this display cable. This one, this is the camera right here. So we're gonna have to be very careful, especially with a decade old of cables. Let's do it slowly. Basically what we're doing is swapping all of these parts right here, including the antenna and the logic board itself to the whole new shell. All right, so I just found out what this is, this cable that broke off. It looks like it's the right speaker. Well, 
you can see there's a bit of a crack on the keyboard side of things right there. I'm also starting to notice the whole keyboard has completely fallen apart. Remember when we were trying to type on the keyboard, it wasn't registering properly. I also found the reason why the trackpad wasn't working. And that is because it was already split in half. Now the next task we need to do is to remove the antenna right here. So the 2012 has a 4.0 Bluetooth, which means we can do airdrops and other modern features like handoff. And it looks like this one's already completely disconnected. Someone completely forgot to put that back and I have to be very careful here. Voila, easy as that. And it comes out. Oh. Perfect. This is also what we need. We need this trackpad. What we can do is just take this off like that. And we're gonna need this as well because this is a six gigabyte per second cable. The donor I have is a 2010 and I believe that's only 1.5 gigabytes per second. Should be able to just gently pry this out without breaking the cable. Here comes the new trackpad from the 2012 shell. I'm gonna slap on the traditional hard drive. This is just gonna be temporary. Off camera, I took out the black bar as well as took out the display from the top case. As you can see, I've installed the hinges off camera because they take quite a bit of time and they are solid as a rock. The screen itself was wobbling around earlier, but now it shouldn't wobble because we have tightened everything up. Now we have installed the black bar plastics, completely different from the crack previous one. It looks very fresh. All right, so now that we have completely fixed the whole black bar as well as the hinges situation, I realize we don't have a trackpad cable, so I did order that online. So I managed to take out this cable from one of my 2011 MacBook Pro 15 inch. Now putting this cable back in is very simple. All you have to do is just use the small end, run it under this little hole and voila. Now it's time to clean out the motherboard and install new thermal paste, install everything, and then we can finally get with new parts. So I've cleaned this 2012 logic board. So let's see how bad it is. It looks like it's been replaced at some point. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's definitely way too much for a stock Apple thermal paste. So I guess this is a good thing because that means that this CPU wasn't really too hot because the previous owner have definitely replaced the thermal paste. Well, it is rock solid, so we definitely need to replace it. We're gonna go ahead and install this logic board back that one goes there and goes here. Now I am getting full on replacement battery. So we're gonna have a brand new battery as well as a whole new hard drive, switching it to an SSD. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and see if this would actually start. I just need to put this bottom cover. Pretty excited about this. Let's press power on. Well, that's always great. Oh, okay, boots up pretty quick. I said that too early. The battery definitely has some sort of voltage issue. It's definitely going out. I'm gonna go ahead and use this bootable drive right here that I have. Look at that, we have a working trackpad. Remember it wasn't working before? Now it's completely working. All right, I am super excited with this computer. Now that it has fully booted up, we can check if the track code is working. And as you can see, the trackpad is working properly. The keyboard should be working fully as well. This is a test of the new keyboard I installed and looks like it's working properly. You can see that aside from the HD 4000 graphics, we also have an NVIDIA GeForce 650M. The only thing that this computer unfortunately does not have is the right speaker. So if we go to the sound, we click all the way to the right balance for the sound, you can see we can't really hear anything. If I go to the left, you could hear it, but it's not really loud. I mentioned about upgrading. We got a couple of new goodies here because I can definitely see myself 
using this computer. It's definitely very usable in today's world. So we're gonna keep it up with today's world. So what we have here is a 512 gigabyte SSD from Inland Micro Center. Now these are pretty solid SSDs. I've never had any problems with them the past couple of years. And they're not the best when it comes to read and write, so this and that, but they are pretty good for what this is. It has 512 megabytes of read, 450 on the right. And we also have a fresh new battery as well from Micro Center. Got this for a very good deal. And look at that, complete new replacement for the battery. So we have a fresh new battery we can install on this computer. Looks like this is a 5300 milliamps. That's actually not as much as I thought it would be. All right, it's time to upgrade this gigantic of a computer. All we have to do is just rip this thing off. This one feels heavier than this. I feel like this would be a lot more solid. And newer tech is relatively a good brand as well. I'm very curious to see if this would even last that long. Unplug this thing. Yeah, I completely ruined this box, but it is what it is, right? Comes the 512 gigabyte SSD. Very exciting. So plug this back in the hard drive. There you go. Last but not the least, go ahead and plug this into the logic board. That looks like it hasn't been opened in a very long time. All right, let me go ahead and clean everything up here. I have officially finished cleaning this MacBook. There's a bit of residue here from a sticker. Can't seem to take it off. The bottom shows a lot of wear and tear, but for the most part, I don't think that's really a big issue. Macintosh SSD, now that we have an SSD power. And yeah, look at that, cycle count one. What I have here is a hard drive containing open core Hatcher Legacy Sonoma. Looks like it's booting up. And install Sonoma, continue, agree. And install to the internal hard drive here. I've officially downloaded Sonoma on this computer. And you can see it's the 2.3 gigahertz quad core. And it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Funny enough, that's actually even more than today's new M3 base model MacBooks. 8 gigabytes in today's world is clearly not enough. But we're going to go ahead and do some benchmarks right here. I have a couple of benchmarks. We got Blackmagic Speed Test, Cinebench, and we also have Geekbench here. If I can go to the download section, we got Geekbench 6 here. Now, we're going to do a speed test on this SSD. Now, this isn't really the best SSD in the world. This also isn't the worst. We're getting about 430, 440 megabytes per second on the write speed. It should be a lot higher for the read speed. Let's see here. Yep. Well, eh, it's about the same. It's actually a little bit lower, which is interesting. Personally, it's fine. It's doable. It's definitely a lot faster than a regular hard drive. Moving on, can go to Cinebench. Now, I'm actually excited for Cinebench because I'm actually very curious how that GT650M is going to perform. All right, so I guess we got about 197 points in the multi-core score. This took forever. I literally watched one episode of Invisible Men, so that's about 30 minutes of doing all these benchmarks. Now, to put it to perspective, you can see the M1 Ultra right here has 1625. That's 1625. And M1 is 509. So the fact that this is 197 just means that an M1 is probably like four or five times faster than this computer right now. But hey, it is what it is, right? Like it's perfectly usable. We can move on to Geekbench. Let's try the GPU first and see where that stacks up. These benchmark take so long that I'm actually almost finishing up an episode of Invisible Season 2. All right, so it finally showed up. OpenCL Geekbench 6. It scored a 37.55. 3755, we're gonna have to scroll all the way down here. So right around where it would actually be, a GT635. And actually it scored pretty similar to a GT740M. Well, I guess we could do a CPU test and see how that four core eight thread is stacking up in the real world. 671 for the single core and 2351 for the multi-core score. So if we scroll all the way down here, it's faster than a early 2013 MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina. It's faster than a 21 inch iMac 2011. It's right around a Mac Pro late 2013. Now for the multi-score, 
let's go ahead and check this out 2351 it scored around right around a i7 3720q from a late 2012 mac mini look at this a 2017 13 inch with two cores is actually scoring a little bit better and it's a dual core huh this is what originally it would have scored 2311 for a 15 inch mid 2012. I guess it's just the extra RAM and the SSD really does make a bit of a difference. Now it's time to browse the internet. YouTube on this computer is not an issue. Let's go ahead and go to 1080p here. Now 1080p should be the maximum resolution this display supports because it doesn't really have anything higher than that. It's a 1440 by 900 display. It's not even a 1080p, but you can see it's playing pretty smooth. This is going to be the same for the most part of every web browsing you're going to be doing on this computer. It will be completely fine. Scroll down. You see how you can just scroll down with ease. And if I just zoom in, pinch in, pinch out, you can see how smooth and buttery smooth it is. And this is running Sonoma, which is not supposed to be running on this computer. But it is, I guess. And that GT650M with the 512 megabytes of GDDR5 might not sound a lot, but it should still be perfectly capable for a lot of a little bit more intensive apps, but not necessarily anything heavier than 1080p. All right, so in conclusion, oh shit. Overall, I think this is gonna do it for this video. I'm pretty satisfied with this MacBook. I feel like we did a lot of stuff for this MacBook to have a second chance at life. I mean, at first the trackpad didn't work, the keyboard didn't work, uh, the hinges were pretty weak. There's a lot of sketchy upgrades that the previous owner did that, you know, managed to break certain things like the speaker and whatnot. But you know, little mishaps here and there isn't gonna kill the whole thing. This is gonna be really a fun computer to have around, laying around as a backup machine because despite this being 2012, it is still plenty powerful. Powerful. And the GT650M, although it's not the greatest thing in the world, it never was, it is still perfectly capable of running certain games on Windows 10. So that might have to be another video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.